So I guess before we get started, I have a question. Um, why do you eat? What's the main reason for eating? Energy. Sorry. That's your Energy. Okay. Yeah. Happy, sad, tired. Ah, happy, sad. So tapping into some of the emotions. So a lot of people, when I ask that question, they answer because they're hungry. But actually, there are seven different types of hunger, which is quite interesting. And so we tapped on a few. Um, so there's eye hunger, nose hunger, um, heart hunger. So those are kind of the emotions. Mind hunger, which is more focused on kind of like that, oh, I should eat this or I shouldn't eat that. There's the cellular level of hunger as to, um, you know, like what's the wisdom in your body? What is your body telling you that you need? Um, and then finally, there's the mouth hunger. So that's the feeling and the texture of food in your mouth. So knowing this, we're going to kind of go into some of those things as we look at this recipe. Yeah, so for this one, um, around this time of year, uh, my family, is we start to cook a little bit more fish. Um, and fish cakes um, are sort of a traditional uh, recipe. Um, nice little bite-sized recipe too, so you can mm -hmm. make this as sort of um, a snack and you can freeze them and then you know, even if you have a small appetite, um, you can pop a couple in the oven. So it's a really nice um, little recipe. We're going to use, you typically use fish and potato. Instead of potato, we're going to use uh, another one of my favorite root vegetables. Anyone know what this funny looking guy is? <laughs> celery root. Celery root. Yes. Celery root. So, or celeriac, you might see it in the grocery store. Uh, it's literally the root of your celery that you're probably more used to seeing. Um, it's, a, it's grown a little differently, so the celery on top isn't sort of the, the one you see in the grocery store. The ones that come out of the celery roots are a little uh, tinier and fibrous, but you have this beautiful root vegetable that grows out of the bottom that smells like celery mm -hmm. and even tastes a little bit like celery, but it looks a little bit more like, you know, traditional potato. So mm -hmm. it's got that creamy, uh, 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 flesh that when it cooks down it's really nice and soft and pillowy and you can do pretty much the exact same thing you would use a potato for so you can mash it you can roast it so all I do is just peel the outside off and then you can chunk it up to bigger pieces and um, for this I just need to soften it up a little bit so I'll just throw it into some boiling water uh, for about 10 15 minutes until it's really nice and soft and it's almost falling apart and it looks a little more like this so this with my fingers mm. I can sort of squeeze it super super soft and that's that's what we're looking for there so that's for our celery root and we're gonna mash that up with a fork or you can use a potato masher just until it becomes doesn't have to be super creamy, but until it's pretty soft. A little bit of the texture is actually okay with this. Yeah. Uh, you can also season it at this point too, if you want to add just a little pinch of salt, a little pinch of pepper. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, part of the different type of hunger that I mentioned was like that mouthfeel hunger. So sometimes you're craving something that's crunchy or creamy, and so you would have anything to satisfy that sensation. Um, so something like this type of um, vegetable that has that creamy texture and, and feeling in your mouth can satisfy that instead of, you know, something else that you might indulge into. For sure. So that's what we're looking for. Um, and then we can finish the rest of the recipes, or rest of the ingredients. Now another part of the mindful cooking process is to try to limit the amount of distractions as mm -hmm. possible. This is, I, I completely understand, this is not in your control all the time. Yeah. But, um, you know, I find even myself, you know, turning on the radio or turning on the TV and you're trying to multitask and really you're, you're not, you're, you're almost cooking subconsciously. Right. Or you're eating, rather. Emotions. Right. Or <laughs> eating, exactly. Like we listen to the TV or we're on our phone reading um, or even talking to people could be a distraction. Yes. Or even wearing silly hats I find is very distracting. <laughs> Probably won't do this again. But um, trying to just focus on the cooking itself 
Um, it can definitely be a little less stressful, a little more relaxing. You're probably going to make a better dish at the end. It's going to taste probably a lot better because you're actually focusing on what you're putting in instead of like tasting like, oh yeah, I forgot to add this or I forgot to add this, which happens all the time. Um, so as much as possible, uh, definitely try to practice a little more focused cooking for sure. So once we have our mashed celery root, any root vegetable will work here, by the way. So if you did want classic potato, definitely do that. Sweet potato is really nice as well as a substitution. Uh, you can use parsnips, anything will work. Uh, then we're gonna add some fish. This is already cooked, so I have some haddock here. You can add some cod. Uh, you can cook it whatever, whichever way you want. You can roast it in the oven, poach it. Uh, and I'm just flaking it in here into somewhat bigger pieces because I like sort of the bigger texture. I don't want it to be too fine. And Could then, you use sam uh, canned? Yes, you can absolutely use like canned tuna, canned salmon. Mm -hmm. That would work well in this for sure. Any fish. Yeah. So we have a little bit of a haddock in there. And then we're going to add a little bit of, this is a chopped uh, shallot or onion. Again, some, for some flavor, I'm going to add about a quarter cup to this. I'm going to add one egg. This is going to help to bind the mm -hmm. entire dish together. And I'm going to add a little bit of uh, turmeric as well. This is something my aunt probably would not add, <laughs> but we're changing it up a little bit. I just love, uh, the flavor is very subtle. We're not adding too much. So it's not too much of the flavor, but the color, it's going to turn this really nice golden color. So um, I think it's a nice little touch. And then again, if you like, if you don't like parsley, or if you like parsley, or if you like cilantro, or if you like <laughs> spicy, you can add some chili. Mm -hmm. This is where you want to add the your creative flavors, size. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you might, um, you know, the holiday time could be really exciting, but it also could be stressful. Um, so, you know, you might tap into kind of as you become more aware of why you're eating, like, are you hungry for food or are you hungry for, you know, is it emotion? Like, are you bored? Are you sad? Are you lonely? You know, um, because, you know, you might be waiting for tests. Uh, to come back from a certain uh, treatment. So, you know, you might be anxious. So just becoming more aware of that um, is definitely something that part of the mindful eating process um, allows you to tap into and to do. All right, so we have the mixture, it's come together, mm -hmm. and you can see how it's taken on that turmeric color, right? It's become really, really nice and golden and yellow here. Uh, this, the potato, or sorry, the, the celery root retains some of the water when mm -hmm. you do cook it. Um, it definitely has a higher water content than probably your regular potato. Um, so this, for me, texturally, is still nice and creamy. Uh, it's not dry, uh, but it's not overly wet as well. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with. If you find that it is a little too dry, then you can definitely add some yogurt or you can add a little bit of olive oil or even a little bit of, uh, if you want to add some calories, you can even add a little bit of cream as well, just to soften it up a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, so this is pretty much what I'm looking for. And then, again, these would typically be fried, but uh, I think they're, they're just as good baked and they're a little bit easier to bake them as well. So I get probably like a good spoon size, depending on how big you want to make them and just pat them gently into like a little ball, mm -hmm. and then you can press them down into a little cake. Yeah. So pretty straightforward. So we're making them into kind of the bite-sized snacks, but um, you certainly can make bigger ones so that you could have it for a meal. And as Jeremy said before, it's really easy to freeze and then take, in, take out of the freezer for a later time. So these, again, make them any, any size, but we have a little bit of that protein in there, which is a nice way to have fish especially I think for those who are not big fish eaters, mm -hmm. when you surround them by potato or other vegetables, <laughs> uh, sometimes it's a little bit easier, Yeah. right? So yeah. you fill up that 
whole baking dish. I have a lined with parchment paper. Again, uh, parchment paper is just going to keep your pan a little bit cleaner. It acts as like a non-stick too. Um, and then that's going to go into the oven. Uh, a little bit higher heat. So I've got 400 degrees uh, for about 15 to 20 minutes. I just want like a really nice golden brown on the outside. Yeah. Any questions so far? Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward with that one? <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, before you eat or during your eating process, you know, you want to assess your level of hunger. Um, so ask yourself kind of on that scale of 1 to 10, you know, 1 being not hungry at all, 10 being very hungry. And you could ask yourself that before, during, and after, and then um, that will allow you to determine, you know, how much, like I said, in the mindful eating process and um, what you want to eat next. Then for just a quick little sauce, got a little bit of yogurt in here. This is just plain yogurt. And I'm going to add some lemon zest. Who uses the zest of their citrus? Yeah, so this is an ingredient that we often throw out. <laughs> uh, wash your citrus, you know, really well. But then just removing the outer layer is where you're going to get all the oils and the fragrance of mm -hmm. that citrus. Uh, so the lemon, as soon as I'm grating it, again, talk about mindful yeah. cooking, that <laughs> aroma smell. is hitting yeah. me right away. That's kind of known as the Cinnabon effect. So you know when you're in a mall and all of a sudden you smell that, ah, um, yes. the cinna cinnamon rolls. Um, you may not have been hungry, you may have just been eaten, but the fact that you smell something really, really strong triggers that desire to eat. So that happens a lot. You may have walked into today's kitchen with the aromas and, you know, coming from eating breakfast or just having a snack or not feeling hungry at all. And then just because of the smell, you feel like you want to eat something. I have been a victim of the Cinnabon yes. effect many a time. Yes. So a little bit of lemon juice in there. Stir that around just to thin it out a little bit. And yeah. I'll add some, again, some other flavors. We have some dill here, which I think is classic with fish. Yeah, it's a nice. But you can definitely add um, some cilantro if you want. <laughs> That's usually the reaction. It's either mm or... <laughs> <laughs> or the opposite. The dill is nice. Dill has a really nice aroma. And again, you know, as you're cutting, smelling the aromas, right? And this is another great way to connect with the ingredient, especially if you've never used cilantro. You know, you might think you hate it, but maybe you're, you know, inside, you actually really love cilantro. <laughs> Or you just haven't been using it in the right ways. Yes. <laughs> it's a genetic thing, though, whether, you're, <laughs> whether you like it or not. So a so, uh, really nice dipping sauce there. And I'll show you. I had these ones made up before. Again, just until they're really nice and golden brown on top. That's what we're looking mm, for, right? Yeah. Um, and again, these are nice. Before the meal, even a few of them, as like a like a starter or something. And if you want to get chefy, put <laughs> a little bit of that yogurt on the bottom. And again, this is sort of like the mindful cooking, mindful eating. Yeah. Actually, there has been studies done that when people present, like take some time to make the presentation of their food look nicer as if, like what Jeremy says, chefy, that the food actually tastes better. Um, so again, tapping into the people who may not have an appetite or feel nauseous or maybe you're losing weight and you want to, you know, increase some calories. So m taking five minutes or whatever to um, make the presentation of the plate more appetizing and creating a, a nicer appearance will make the food taste better. Yeah, so mindful to know. plating. Mindful plating. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So there's the uh, fish and celery root cakes with our lemon dill yogurt. All right, two for two. Yeah. So